know what really pisses me off? And it's always oh, so annoying. I'm like, oh! He sees the positive out of everything. This podcast is for all couples. If you need some advice or you're just trying to see how do we make it work, we're just going to give out our advice to you. Yep, I've gotten trained pretty well. I think. Ah! We don't have a perfect marriage or perfect relationship, but what we have is we've learned to love each of our imperfections. Learn each other's love language. And I feel like if you wake up every single day just to say, hey, I just want to figure out what I can do today to make that person happy. I'll tell you what she farted in the bed. <laughs> True story. <laughs> You're my little smelly poo. <laughs> <laughs> That's a cheeky yeah. oh, what up, peeps? Rock T's in the house. Ricky Smiley Morning Show. And I'm Crystal. Rock T's better hat. You know, you got like a uh, lipstick on your teeth right now. Too cool well, to be embarrassed. Well, it's lip gloss, by the way. You know what I'm saying? It's all to the good, man. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. Welcome to the Pro Prepare Podcast. We back again for another episode, man. It's going down real big. This is the Celebrity Couples Series. And we are like super excited. We got a couple... That's standing by. You already heard one of them laugh. You know what I'm saying? She right. always, she always laughing at everything funny. But uh, she's a part of one. Of, she's one of my coworkers on the Ricky Smiley Morning Show. She has one of the coolest husbands on earth, Mike Sterling in the house. Y'all give it up for Eva Marcel and Mike Sterling. Hey. Hey. I see y'all chilling hey, like y'all. serious quarantining over there. Y'all just like in cool out mode right now. Man, the <laughs> nanny just got here. We had dinner. We're chilling. Mike's having his bourbon. I'm having my little wine. We're unwinding. You know, we are regular working parents with three kids, two still in diapers. So it's real. Bless <laughs> y'all. Y'all are stuck in the house. Yeah. Oh, listen. <laughs> but you know what? I'm not even mad at the quarantine. Are, are you tired of me? Are you tired of being stuck in the house? No, no, no. I'm not tired of being stuck in the house. Good answer, See? Mike. <laughs> 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 Don't even go there, my. I understand, Joe. I understand, bro. Hey, you, you can tell y'all like in straight chill mode because, like, Mike, half of your head is cut off with the camera. Y'all, right. y'all ain't even worried about adjusting the camera right now. <laughs> there it goes. <laughs> all right, man. First of all, thanks a lot for joining us, man. We ain't gonna hold you guys too long, but uh, how you good? We always, uh, a lot of people always think that Crystal and I like are this perfect couple. And we're the first to tell everybody we far from perfect. But we have discovered right. that we're perfect for each other. Of course. You know what I'm saying? So um, we wanted to get a lot of our celebrity couples and friends on the podcast so we can eventually find out at the end of this what makes you two perfect for each other. But before we get into that, I know this little thing right here got some <laughs> questions she want to throw out there. I y'all. do. Um, tell okay. us a little bit. More about what both of y'all do, like now, just a little bit, just in case. What do you mean? Like for a living got, or as like a couple? You got, as a couple, separately, or what y'all got going on? Because everybody, when I say I say even Marcel's, you know, we always think of Americans Next Top Model. I don't know if everyone knows that you got uh, way more things going than just Americans Next oh. Top. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, I definitely wear a lot of hats. Um, none during quarantine. I might, you know, I'm just letting it grow out. But I definitely uh, wear a lot of hats. I'm a, a mother first, very proud. Th- three beautiful children, a wife. Um, I'm an entrepreneur. I have a home decor line. I have a CBD line called CBD. Um, I'm on the Ricky Smiley Morning Show every morning, six to ten. Um, I'm on Real Housewives of Atlanta. Um, Yes. So I'm always working, always grinding. My dad always said, I always have free hustles. And right. Mike, um, he actually just got alive. Um, I won't run your resume, but you can tell him what you got going on. <laughs> yeah, I'm, Come just, on Mike. I'm just practicing. I'm just, no, I'm just practicing law. Uh, so I'm a manager. I'm a founding partner of Dreyer Sterling uh, LLC in Atlanta. And so I spend most of my days uh, doing uh, criminal defense work as well as doing uh, complex contractual and commercial litigation, which oftentimes involves uh, suing insurance companies who don't who refuse to pay or, or treat people poorly uh, w- when the time comes. And so uh, I just spend most of my days trying to fight for people who are vulnerable or who otherwise wouldn't have somebody to fight for. Yeah. Love it. 
Love it now. And how did you two meet? <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> no, no, no. Whose story? <laughs> we said, how did y'all meet? Now, okay, okay, okay. okay. You say, how did we meet, baby? We, we met at a fundraiser. We met at a fundraiser. So uh, at the time, I was uh, the senior advisor to the mayor of Atlanta. Uh, and I was also running the city's, I had just recently taken over the city's workforce agency, which was, you know, about to shut down. Uh, it, or it was recommended that it be shuttered. And I was asked by the mayor of the city of Atlanta to take it over to try to save it. Uh, so I started doing a bunch of creative and innovative things. And one of those things was uh, hosting a uh, scholarship fundraiser mm -hmm. for uh, students uh, who are graduating from Atlanta Public High School so that they could go to college. And I held this big fundraiser at a upscale, uh, I, I, I guess it was a furniture store, but it was this really upscale furniture store in Buckhead. Uh, in yeah. Buckhead. And at the time, separately, Eva was in town shooting a TV show called Born Again Virgin uh, for TV One. Mm -hmm. And she knew someone from the city who invited her to this fundraiser we were doing. The mayor was there and a lot of his supporters were there. And she came to that fundraiser and we met at that fundraiser. They they introduced us at that fundraiser. Some people introduced us at that fundraiser. That was the moment, Crystal. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know that moment, girl. I did. That was the moment. I remember what I was wearing. I remember what he was wearing. Yeah. That was the moment. Yes. So was 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 Eva, was you trying to be like, like, I'm gonna be like cool, kind of hard to get? Yeah, I know he got a little swag about him, but I ain't gonna just let him know that I'm really <laughs> like I wanna I wanna go see, you know what I'm saying? Or was you just like, were you like, yo, I dig this dude? Is it was it kind of like love at first sight type situation? Well, it was one of those where you ever have you ever been in a room and you can tell that somebody is somebody? Even yeah. if you don't know who they are or what they do, but you know that he's like someone. So it yeah. was that. It was like he had his like glow around him. I knew he was somebody. I just didn't know him. <laughs> but I also <laughs> knew that a lot of times guys are afraid to approach women, especially women like us, Crystal, that like got their own thing going on right. and might have a little drip about them, you know? So mm -hmm. I knew that um, <laughs> I had to give him a couple of hints. Cause he might be the kind of guy that you know might, <laughs> might not just step to me. So right. I definitely uh, dropped a hint or two. Yes, sir. Definitely. I love it. I love it. Yes, sir. Uh, well, let's get right into it, man. You know, we we don't waste no time. No. So we all know Real Housewives of Atlanta just aired that episode where you changed your daughter's last name. Now, Mike, mm -hmm. this is for you. The reason why I bring this up because I don't know if you know for Mother's Day. My 18-year-old daughter surprised me with adoption papers and asked me to adopt her as a <sighs> gift. Oh, oh I I try not to cry now thinking about it. It's coming. <laughs> it's coming. <laughs> <laughs> but that meant the world to me to know that she yeah. wants me to make it official in the law's eyes. Because I've always looked at her as my daughter. So how did that make you feel? Because I know she's younger. Like, how did it make you feel? Yeah, well, you know, I'll tell you all this. First of all, I you all are breaking news here because I never talk about this publicly ever. Ever. Because uh the most of, the most important thing to me is Marley, right? It's if I'm committed to Eva, the most important thing to me has always been to protect her, to make sure she's okay, and to make sure that the public record is clear whenever she's 15, 16, 17, or 18, that my only obligation was to her. There are times where there have been a lot of stuff reported publicly in the media. People said very negative or said things about what we do with Marley publicly. And I refuse to respond because in my mind, it's always I've always known that in 10 or 12 years, when she's got the uh, discretion, uh, uh, she's got the ability to, to ascertain for herself what happened there will be no public record of me saying anything and she will know what I was at home and who I did, who I was and what I did. And, you know, she'll be able to decide for herself. So let me say this. My thing is my only, my only concern is for her well being. It is her interests are, are above my own. Uh, my ego a lot of times wants me to respond to things that are said or wants me to say things, but I put my 
side because I only care about making sure she's got the foundation she needs to chase her hopes and dreams, to grow up to be the lady, young lady, the lady that, you know, that, that, that I want her to be. And so I only care about her interests. And so to the extent that, you know, Eva wanted her to be included in the family, to not feel left out, to not feel different, to not have a different last name than everybody else in the family. I wanted to make sure that I could make that happen because Eva, Eva, you know, we try to do what's in her best interest. And that's what really, really is important to us is making sure that, you know, she's protected and that, and that, that I'm always saying, it's not about me. It's not about Eva. It's about doing what we think is best for her. Mm-hmm. Man, that's that's uh, that says a lot about both of you guys because you know I I keep refalling in love with her so many mm-hmm. times because when we got married, she not only said vows to me, mm-hmm. she wrote vows to my daughters, Lyric and Harmony, and wow. who, were, who were not her her biological kids. And so at that moment, I didn't know she was doing that, and then she did it right there on the altar, and I was like, wow. I mean, God, that's thank beautiful. you. Wow. I, he obviously made the right decision by, by making her my wife. Um, and so for Harmony to come and surprise her on Mother's Day <laughs> to say, I want you to officially adopt me. That was like, that's so beautiful. Look, and look, it goes to the point when you love someone, when you're in love with someone, you accept everything that comes with mm-hmm. them, yeah. no matter what it is. You know, a lot of times people come with their own warts, their vices, their pitfalls, their past whatever it is, and if, if you're going to love someone and be in love with them and build a life with them, you have to accept everything that comes with them. And for you, you know, that was, Crystal, for you, that was Rock T and his daughters. For me and Eva, that was, you know, everything that just, everything that comes with it. Mm-hmm. Right. I'm a very private person. I, you know, I never thought I would marry somebody who was in the spotlight the way Eva is, but I accepted what came with it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Man, that says a lot, like, I was wondering, because I feel the exact same way. Never have I ever intended to do anything with the girls besides protect them and guide them in the right way, the way I knew how. I pray all the time and ask him to help me to make the right decisions, because I understand I'm going to make mistakes. But everything I've ever done for either one of my kids is all has been out of love. Nothing out of hate has been out of love to protect them and guide them. So, Eva, I I literally, like, give you kudos, because you are a strong woman to be dealing with Thank all that you. in the media and y'all can still hold that together so that says a lot about both you guys so i appreciate y'all saying that because y'all didn't have Thank to yeah <laughs> so let's 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 transition from what you just said now being in the media you know when you're when your relationship is out there and mm-hmm. when paparazzi and, and other media tries to dig and dig and dig and then we all, we got to come home to each other. Right. So if she heard something about Rock T out there and on social media or whatever, and she addresses it to me, you know, what we do is we've learned to just, we've eliminated any secrets. We, right. we, we tell each mm-hmm. other everything. And that helps us out because I would rather hear something from her right. first rather than hearing something from the public, if that makes sense. Right, right. So how do you guys handle that situation? Well, for for us, um, I've been in the public eye since I was about 18 years old. So any and everything that I have done has been public. There aren't really many secrets that I can't have outside of being like, you know, 14. Um So I've lived my life as an open book. Um, Mike and I are very, very transparent. Communication is important to us. Um, It affords us relationship. You know, when we first started off, um, we began our relationship in Atlanta, but then to Los Angeles. So we did a few years with me in LA and him in Atlanta, and we had a long distance relationship. So communication was all we had. Right. And we were able to build a foundation um, of a relationship upon communication where now as a married couple together, we just continue that Um, for him. He's pretty transparent and he has enough line brothers and friends to tell me what he hasn't (laughs) told me already. So but you know what? We're one of those couples and we've talked about it on the Ricky Smiley Morning Show. I've done a couple of Eva's Corners about it. Um, I'm one of those kind of people that. Whatever was before me was before me. 
Right. Oh, come Ooh, on say now. That. Preach. Say that again. I, if something came up in the media with someone he used to date that had something to say, you know, it was before me. Ever since we laid eyes on each other, we have only had eyes for each other. So whatever happened prior to, for me, it's neither here nor there. Love it. All right. So what if, what if, go ahead, Mike. No, I was going to say, I think the other thing we did that was smart was that we dated for probably about seven or eight months before we went public with our relationship. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. um, so we knew that there were going to be judgmental people on both sides, like, you know, probably more so on either side because she just she's she was, you know, so much more you know public than I was. But I knew there were going to be people. She knew there were going to be people. Who but he like, was also running for mayor and was a, is, a, is a large fixture in the Atlanta community and in um, in Atlanta's uh, society from you know, politics to uh, your average um, person on the street because he is a, a city guy. He loves his community. So he's one of those that he's a name here in the city himself, yeah. for, right. for sure. So, so we knew there would be like the country club crowd who would be like, oh, I can't believe right. you're dating her. And we knew that there would be the general crowd who would be like, wait, what? You're not dating a rapper or an actor or somebody mm. you're dating a city administrator? Like, you know what I'm saying? So we knew. We knew that there would be, you know, it would be that. So we decided that by the time we went public, we wanted our relationship to be strong enough to withstand whatever was coming. And and it also did it did a couple of things. It made sure our relationship was strong enough before we went public. And then it also helped us really, really get to know each other, to build our relationship so it could be strong enough. And then and if, and if in three months it didn't work out, we wouldn't have been public with it. It would have been little fanfare. All right. When, when it didn't work out, but if it did work out, you know, then we would go public. Part of yeah. that too, though, if I could piggyback, part of that too, I think why why it really worked for us is you have to be emotionally available. You know, mm-hmm. sometimes people think because you have money, because you're single, because you're attractive, um, that's, you know, enough to be eligible right. and, you know, to have a good relationship, but you have to be emotionally available and in the same space. And I think, about with that transparency, Mike and I were very clear to each other. At least I know <laughs> I led the charge very early on with where I was and what I wanted. You know what I mean? So there wasn't a whole lot of confusion or guessing or trying right. to figure this thing out. You know, we were very, very transparent and we, you know, modeled our relationship after that. And that was the beginning. That's what's up. So I see y'all already know a lot about each other that y'all like. What does he do that get on your nerves? Oh, oh. I know it's something. Um, I can oh, never do that the- gets process. on my nerves. <laughs> um, As he takes a drink. <laughs> you know what? I must say, and I know this is going to sound corny. Mike is a really, really good guy. He does not do much that's irritating. <laughs> I have a lot of friends who, you know, men, you know, won't pick this up or won't do this or won't do that. Anything I ask Mike to do, he'll do. It's very simple. He's an he's a really easy guy. Um, I mean, I you know, he can go wash a dish or two more. He can wash a couple more dishes. Right. right. <laughs> but the way my you know, the way the grass looks, it's hard to even complain about the dishes because I don't right. touch the grass and it looks great, you know? So <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, give me a couple more years because right now we are almost two years into marriage, uh, but almost five years into being together. And like Rock said about you, I fall in love with him more and more every day. I Aww. I find things more that I love about him than I can complain about. You know what I mean? That's the thing. Love it. All right, Mike. <laughs> the, the spotlight is on you, dog. I know there's <laughs> one thing about <laughs> Give me one. Why? Give me what I do. It, it, I, I do so much. No, I, do, I know the list is long over here. It's not a long list. Let me tell you what Eva does. I was like taught very early on as a child not to be wasteful. Uh, Eva will like get a get a, like a water bottle or a Sprite or something and she will drink half of it and leave the other half have like laying around and i'd be like i'd be like why did you why did you get the whole sprite you know, it's gonna drink all of it that's what i said I I, that's the only thing i've ever told why do you do that you just wasting car. you just wasting stuff but you'll have like it'll be like you'll walk around the house it'll be like four and a half bottles of 
I'm like, you couldn't just finish the other bottle first? No, because it's flat now. <laughs> right, right. I need that. I need that fresh. Right. Need that fresh. But it, I mean, yeah. if that's our biggest. <laughs> See, that's what happens. <laughs> that's that, what happens. If that's our biggest problem, I think we're gonna be okay. <laughs> we gonna be. Yeah. I love it, man. Because we just discovered by being in quarantine at the house every single day, all day. Because yes. I'm a move around type guy. I'm always in and out the house, moving I'm around. I'm gonna play. And she, you know, she woke up in the middle of the night one morning, about three o'clock in the morning. And she said, babe, I'm like, what? I'm jumping out of bed. Like, I'm thinking something wrong. And she says, you know what? I said, what? She says, I really like you. <laughs> <laughs> I meant that, though. Like, I, w- nice. I always wondered, could you love and like? But I really we had that conversation. <laughs> Did, right. Yeah. Would you rather be loved or like? And low key, I'm not. I'm glad that he loves me. I know that he loves me, but I want him to like me too. To be around, right? Like you know, I'm just to good. be homies. Like my boy, I can tell him anything, and I can do shit, and just be like, all right, okay, I won't do that. Oh no my more. god, you! This is literally <laughs> one of Eva's corners. Like I know you love your spouse, but do you like them? Right. Come on. And those are different. Right. I feel like Corona has exposed a lot of under. <laughs> Underlining stuff in relationships that people can easily um, ignore because yeah. of your day to day routine and your life's uh, priorities and requirements that you don't get back to stuff like that. But even for Mike and I, like, you know, I make it a point to have date nights every Friday. And Come it could be I- like a big deal or a small deal, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but just concentrated time together so that we can continue to like each other and not right. just coexist, you know, because I have friends that are married and they roommates. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. we do too. And they calling us like, so do you still, I was like, well, I actually like him. Like, <laughs> right. I don't know. It's different for us than y'all. So I don't know what to tell you. But so you have like- to work on that though. I think that's yes. something that you uh, work on, you know, finding, um, learning your spouse's interests, their new interests, um, Mm -hmm. being interested in those things too, engaging, um, and not just about the stuff with the kids and around the house, but you know, what they care, right? you know, so that you can stay in that space where, you know, it feels special. Mm Mm-hmm. Exactly. That's man, it. Now, I love it, man. So we're going to ask you guys a couple of fun, quick questions before yeah. we get to the last of the Mohicans. Okay. Fun question number one. <laughs> when you got to use the bathroom, oh my God. all right, and you are already in the shower, okay, are you going to step out the shower to walk all the way, track water across the bathroom to the toilet, or are you just going to go ahead and just handle your business right there in the shower? Number one. I'm a water tracker. Me, <laughs> I will track that whole water all the way through. I cannot be in the shower. I just turn. I, I finish the shower for. I just hold it and finish the shower. Because <laughs> this is my fear. My uh, fear is, what if I drop something that I need on the floor? Uh, right. And somebody peed on it. <laughs> right. <laughs> and it doesn't matter like how big the shower is. Yeah. I'm not a man. I don't have aim to go like like nah bathroom. I use the bathroom first <laughs> and shower. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so do y'all know each other's favorite color? Yeah. Yeah. What's her favorite color? Green. What's his? Blue. Okay, so what color is his toothbrush? It's white. We have those electric ones. Yeah. Uh-huh, y'all got it off easy because yeah. I was like, oh. No, but no. we got this down. We will taboo you down. Let's go. Really? Give us some more. Give us some more. All right, so what's the last book that Mike read? Right. Mike was rereading um, the 48 Laws of Power. He started last week. Hold on, Mike. Is that right? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> He's like, damn. <laughs> he he looked kind of surprised, Mike. Like, damn, she really knew that shit. No, it's true. Yeah, I reread 48 Laws of Power. Yeah. Because yeah. it was been on my dining room table in the way. <laughs> oh, I'm like, get this okay. <laughs> All right, Mike. What, what is the last color? Not the not what she got on right now, but what's the last color that Eva had her nails painted? Oh. Oh, that's a good one. Oh. Eva didn't have her nails painted one color. It was like a design. Uh-huh. It was like and, several like like right. designs with like diamonds and rhinestones on them, all kinds of You gotta give me some kind of color scheme because if I don't it, if I don't know her color scheme, it had to be like silver and white or something, if I remember correct. I could be off. What was it? <laughs> Pink and purple. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
And I hey. wore that same set for two months. <laughs> Me too. Yeah, I wore my same. Set I for just two took months. them off. Yeah, she <laughs> broke it. I know she broke it moving a plate though. <laughs> yes. I know she broke it. Oh, that's a like good. Get, ask some more, Rock T. Oh, that was a good one. Let me see. Uh, All right. When you're eating grits, is uh, it sugar in your grits or is it salt and pepper in your grits? Salt and pepper. Sugar. Come on now. Sugar, baby. I'm more sugar. salt and pepper, too. He's Butter sweet. and sugar. Yeah. Oh, Texas, he I, don't, like I don't do no sugar in grits. <laughs> 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 All right, Eva. Does Mike prefer boxer briefs? Or tidy whities It depends, because he has them both. It depends on what he's doing. <laughs> I prefer boxer briefs in blue. Uh, Light blue, personally. See, we got this too, babe. <laughs> <laughs> That's so crazy. Okay, Eva, you or Mike, do you like to see Eva in lingerie or no lingerie? Oh, I got I got a follow-up to this. Oh my gosh, here he go. No, I like I like the lingerie. I like the lingerie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She got a couple okay. new pieces, lingerie. Yeah, I like it. All right. All right, so, oh, so, so here go my follow up. Yeah. I think I know what it is. Do you like her in the lingerie <laughs> with a bonnet on her head? A head <laughs> bonnet. Even doesn't wear a bonnet. No, no. <laughs> But no, I would not. I probably would probably not be my favorite thing. No. Oh, oh my God. He just bringing that shit up because <laughs> you wearing a bonnet during Corona. Get, wait. Get on no, 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 wait. First of all, Corona, I'm not. I'm Man, not uniform. wearing a bonnet. But I had no idea he didn't like my bonnet until one night I was thinking I was cute, put on a little lingerie, but my, I just got my hair done. And if my hair gets an ounce of wetness, it will shrivel up. He sweat when we get into the stuff, right? <laughs> so I'm like, I don't want him messing up my hair. So I put my bonnet on. So I walk out and I'm thinking I'm sexy as shit. Like I'm giving it to him. And he just looks. <laughs> no, Crystal. <laughs> I'm starting at the toes. I'm like, okay, yo, yeah, she got everything. She got the stiletto heels. I'm coming up to the knees and the thighs. And the body and pumps. <laughs> yes, girl. And then the bonnet didn't even match. I didn't even realize it. Mike, <laughs> Mike. <laughs> I get all the way up to the face and I just big ass, I don't even cuss. You got me cussing now. <laughs> <laughs> she looked like Toad from Super Mario Brothers. Like, yo, really? Oh, <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> like, really? Hey. And he was no, like, that Crystal. bonnet. I was like, you don't like my bonnet? He was like, hell no. I was like, funny. I never knew. But see, it took us three years before he even told me he didn't like the bonnet. I never knew it. So I'm no. glad y'all already cleared that up. But I don't I wear would, it I now. Would, I would, I would even no bonnet, but I don't like wave caps either. Oh, me neither. I hate Same wave. idea, though. It's the same idea. Right, to keep your hair up. All right, last question. We're going to wrap this interview up. You know, we everyone that listens to our podcast, they know, you know why we feel like we are perfect for each other. So we want you guys to explain mm -hmm. why do you guys think you two are perfect for each other because there's no such thing as a perfect relationship, but there is a such thing as being perfect for each other. So you guys I'm explain. Mike take it. He speaks really well. I <laughs> 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 uh, I mean, I would just say, you, you know, uh, you got to find, I mean, I think you got to find what, what, what works for you uh, in terms of, you know, a, a, a partner. And part of I mean, part of it is is that there are I think there are two things there are these societal expectations of who you're supposed to be with, and then there are your own personal interactions, feelings, thoughts, your own heart uh, about who you're supposed to be with. And um, for me, you know, being with Eva, she was the perfect match for me because. One, we share a lot of the same values. So even though we are very different in terms of what people may think externally, you know, she's probably more hipster. I'm probably more conservative. I wake up, I'm putting on the suit and tie, you know, you know, before quarantine, I was putting on the suit and tie every day. Eva's putting on some bell bottoms, some hipster, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like she's chilling, you know, so there's a lot of external things, but when it came to values, Things like, you know, her mom and dad have been married for 37, 38 years. My parents have been married for 51 years. Um, we both grew up in house with siblings. We both, 
you know, shared a lot of the same values and values and appreciated things like loyalty, appreciated things like uh, friendship, uh, appreciated things like uh, like treating people well, uh, no matter what the circumstances are. Like just share a lot of the same fundamental core. We both have strong faith in God. Like just a lot of the values that we shared, even though we had a lot of external differences, a lot of the core values and foundations of what made us who we are as people, we have in common. Uh, and I think that's part of what makes us uh, perfect for each other is that our, our base value system is very similar. Yeah. That was well, good job, Eva, for letting him take the lead on that. You yeah, are right. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it's crazy though. I walked down the aisle. My song was Flaws and All by Beyonce because mm-hmm. I knew he was accepting me for all my flaws and everything. I know I'll be having a little attitude and I get a little side you know, every now and then. But the fact that he loved me through it all is the reason why I feel like he was perfect for me. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, yes, absolutely. So, so for, me, was- for me, it was um, one of the first times I felt like I can be me. Mm-hmm. And not right. like what the world wants me to be or what my parents want me to be mm-hmm. or even, you know, these ideas of what I thought I was supposed to be. You know, he just allows me to be me. And if what I want to be tomorrow is different than today, then that's OK. And for me, that meant a lot working in an industry where there are always an expectation of who you are and who you're supposed to be. And as I grow in life and in learning myself um, and being a better mom, I learned that, you know, what I know today and what I believe today might not be the same tomorrow, you know, Mm -hmm. through my growth. And I need to be with someone that is strong enough to love me through my change and my growth and be, you know, willing to change and grow also. Mm -hmm. And so you know, looks will fade, jobs will fade, labels will fade. But at the end of it all, when we're old and we're gray and we're together, we can say, you know, we loved each other through it all and we're able to be who we really wanted to be. Because I don't want to be in a shackled situation. I don't want to be able to be me. And I want him to be him. Right. <laughs> love oh, it. Love it. Man, that's, we can wrap it right there, man. Y'all, y'all brought it all the way home right there. So, uh, man, thank you guys for your time. Uh, everyone that, that that listens to the Rick, I mean the the Perfect Pair podcast, they had they always ask us. You, a lot. We not at work, Rock. We don't go right. Work. He don't know where he at. Robotic, robotic. <laughs> it's, 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 it's on autopilot, bro. When you he been, really is. You've been doing the Ricky Smarty Morning Show for what sixteen years yeah. now. It's like yeah, man. No, but we at the Perfect Pair. <laughs> we at your work job, bro. Right. Don't take right. me to that job. I don't want to go. Yeah, tell him. Go ahead and take it on Tuesday. Go ahead and take it on Tuesday. We off tomorrow. You all right, baby? I will be back on Tuesday. You better stop. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> Where could we find y'all if they wanted to find y'all on social media or website? Well, you can or- find Pat L. Mike right outside in five minutes. Because Pat L. Mike is about to get a cigar in a glass with a big ice cube with something dark in there. And I'm going to try, you know. Um, but on Instagram, you can find... Uh, Mike T. Sterling um, on my Instagram. You can find me at Eva Marcel. Um, if you need a good attorney, what is your... Uh, <laughs> DryerSterling.com. DryerSterling.com. D-R-E-Y-E-R. You having any issues, your friends having any issues, need counsel, you need to know if you even need to know. That's the guy to call. Um, yeah, besides from that, thank you so much for having us on here. Thank you very much. You don't hey, whisk us uh-uh. into... Uh, some Corona baby making moves, so thank you. <laughs> oh, yeah. Baby <laughs> number four. Let's go get it, Mike. <laughs> Y'all look through, man. Perfectpairpodcast.com. Tell a friend to tell a friend. If you ain't heard, then uh, you need to go ahead and drop it. No, I ain't going to say it. <laughs> I knew you were about to say something stupid. Hey, love y'all. Appreciate you, man. Appreciate it. Thank, thank you. Love you. Love you. Love love y'all. Bye. Bye. Well, pretty much, ladies and gentlemen, Billy Goats and girls and bats and everything else. That- Why do you do that? <laughs> just say ladies and gentlemen or just say hi. We are here to tell you guys where to subscribe. Why are you talking like that? You don't even talk like that. Talk I like know. Yourself. Because I'm We're waiting for you. Okay. 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 Subscribe. Please listen. You will not be sorry. Did you just fart? No. <laughs> That's your breath. Oh. Oh.
Oh, come back, Tom. Oh, 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 oh. 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 Bye. Mm. <laughs> That's a cheeky.